we're going to hearing portion of the meeting. Um, simultaneous Mandarin and Cantonese interpretation is being provided for this meeting using the language interpretation function within Zoom. We ask that you be patient in case of any technical issues. Language interpretation will not be enabled until there's instructions on how to access interpretation have been interpreted into Mandarin and Cantonese. Once interpretation has been enabled, the globe icon will appear. A reminder to all speaking today, uh, we ask that everyone speak slowly for the interpreters. Uh, if you're speaking too quickly, I may interrupt you and ask you to speak slower, uh, so thanks. To enable interpretation for Cantonese, please click on the globe icon on the bottom of your screen and select Cantonese for Cantonese. To enable interpretation for Mandarin, please click on the globe icon on the bottom of your screen and select Mandarin for Mandarin. Uh, also, you must mute original audio. So we have uh, Sarah. Will you please now interpret the instructions I just gave into Cantonese? Yes, but um, this is Sarah speaking, but I am the Mandarin interpreter for tonight, and Hao Ran will be the, man the Cantonese interpreter. That's no problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. It's um, so, the language you speak. <laughs> yeah, okay, no problem. Okay, uh, 大家晚上好, 这是我们BPDA的这一个七月的董事会议, 待会呢,我们的这一个翻译的频道会打开, 翻译现在还没有打开，待会打开了之后，你会看到有一个地球的图标，然后您可以在地球的图标选择你想要听取的语言，Mandarin，普通话或者Cantonese，广东话。啊，谢谢大家。Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Um, now, uh, how run? Will you uh, now interpret the instruct instructions I just gave in Cantonese? Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Haran. I'm the uh, Cantonese interpreter for tonight's meeting. Uh, well,我叫浩然,我是廣州話的翻譯。等一陣間會議主持人會將這個翻譯的渠道打開。打開之後,就在你的螢光屏底下有一個地球儀。你打開這個地球儀之後,就點去 啊，广州话，Cantonese嗰方嗰边咧，就可以听到我呢个广州话嘅啊翻译。咁啊，与此同时咧，你可以将啊英文啊原来嗰个声音咧，将佢改成静音。啊，多谢大家，thank you. Okay, thanks so much. Uh, so, um, Annie, if you can now turn the interpretation function on, that would be great. Okay, so uh, as you can see, the, there is a globe icon there. Uh, I'm just gonna wait a few seconds for people to, uh, to join their respective channels. <clears throat> If you're having any difficulty at activating interpretation, please call the number on the screen. And please take note of that phone number on the screen. If you have difficulties later in the meeting, you can call that number. The project presentation has been translated into Chinese and is available on uh, BPDA website at um, bostonplans.org slash about dash us slash BPDA dash board slash board dash meetings. Please take note of the website address on the screen uh, to enable the translated project presentation. This is a public hearing before the Boston Redevelopment Authority doing business as the Boston Planning and Development Agency being held in conformance with Articles 80B and 80C of the Boston Zoning Code to consider the proposed plan development area number 135 and plan development area number 136 for the Fenway Corners project in Fenway, in the Fenway, uh, and to consider each and to consider them each as a development impact project. This hearing was duly advertised on June 29, 2023 in the Boston Herald. This is a VPDA hearing on a proposed petition by the agency. Staff members will first present their case and are subject to questioning by members of the agency. Thereafter, anyone who wishes to testify about the proposed project 
will be afforded an opportunity. We are taking support and opposition at the same time. So if you're planning to testify, please take time now to verify that your computer microphone is active. Click on the hand icon on your Zoom control panel, and uh, this will signal to the staff that you would like to speak. When your hand is raised, it will be blue. If you are calling into the meeting and would like to testify, please dial star nine to raise your hand. When I call for all testimony, staff will announce your name and allow you to talk. Uh, you, um, you must unmute your microphone. Your webcam will not be active. Um, and in an effort to accommodate all who would like to speak about the proposal, each person will be given up to two minutes to comment. The PDA staff will indicate when 30 seconds remain. At that time, please conclude your remarks so that the hearing may continue and others may be heard. Finally, the proponents are allowed a period of five to 10 minutes for rebuttal if they so desire. And now, uh, Michael Sinatra <laughs> will uh, now begin the presentation. Michael. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Secretary Polimus and Director Jemison. I am Michael Sinatra, BPDA Senior Project Manager for this project and the Ombudsman with the Development Review Department. Before you this evening is the proposed Fenway Corners project comprising two planned development areas. The first PDA is number 135, which is the north PDA contain containing the Lansdowne Street block parcel, which includes one building with a total of square footage of approximately 250,000 square feet and a total parking count of 119 spaces. The second PDA is number 136, which is the West PDA containing, containing the Jersey Street block, which includes five buildings of mixed use and residential, the Van Ness block, which includes one commercial and retail building, and the Brookline Ave block, which also includes one commercial and retail building. The total square footage for PDA number 136 will be approximately 1.3 million square feet, and the total parking count will be 1,370 spaces. So the total square footage for both PDAs is approximately 1.6 million, and the total parking count will be 1,489 spaces. Approval is being sought tonight for both PDAs as well as Article 80B for the proposed project. The existing blocks that comprise the project surround Fenway Park. The proponent initially filed their PNF on June 3rd, 2021. Over the past two years, through a rigorous review process with both BPDA city staff and the community, the project has evolved and improved significantly and will greatly enhance some of the blighted areas around the park and create a more year-round destination. When complete, the project will deliver a fully pedestrianized Jersey Street, a newly reimagined Arthur's Alley, several streetscape improvements, as well as 266 units of housing, 20% of which will be designated as affordable housing through the IDP policy. The project includes several on-site transportation improvements and has committed approximately $10 million for improvements to Brookline Avenue and surrounding streets based on the recommendations of the BPDA's ongoing Fen Fenway Kenmore Transportation Action Plan. The proponent has also committed several additional benefits in response to direct feedback from the Fenway community. Key among them is a 10,000 square foot daycare center which will be available to all Fenway residents, as well as a renovation of the Duck House located on Agassiz Way and the Fens. There are many more mitigation and community benefits outlined in the board memo. I particularly want to thank the Fenway community and the Fenway Civic Association for their tireless involvement over the last two plus years, along with the CAC, Community Action Committee. Uh, we look forward to continuing this conversation as these and other benefits outlined in the board memo get fine-tuned over the coming months. As you may recall, the board approved a recent change to the Fenway Neighborhood Zoning, i.e. Article 66, at the board meeting on April 13, 2023. The zoning change allowed additional height on these parcels. However, the maximum density allowed for PDAs was not changed. The project that is before you today is compliant with that allowed density. While the originally filed PNF represents a larger project, any additional density that would exceed the underlying zoning is being deferred until the completion of the FTAP. This additional square footage, approximately 400,000 square feet, first needs to be analyzed for its transportation impacts and will undergo additional regulatory and community process before it is considered for approval. Consideration of this additional square footage will require the proponent to provide additional transportation mitigation as recommended by the FTAP. It will also require as well a change to the underlying zoning in Article 66, an amendment to the Fenway Corners West PDA 
and the notice of project change to the Article 80B project. That will be brought before the Board and Zoning Commission again for approval at a future date. I will now turn it over to BPA uh, Christina Rico from the BPDA Planning Department to run through the planning context slides, and then the proponent will present, after which we will take any questions that you may have. Thank you. Christina, you're muted if you're speaking. You're so muted. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, sincere apologies. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, esteemed members of the board, Director Jemison, and Madam Secretary. I'm Christina Rico, Senior Planner at the BPDA, and I'm pleased to join you this evening to share with you the high-level planning context which informed BPDA's staff-level review of the Fenway Corners proposal. The proposed project includes two PDA overlay, overlay sub subject to zoning regulations relevant to the Fenway Neighborhood District, Article 66 of the Code. Proposed PDA number 135, referred to as Fenway Corners Project North, is located within the Fenway Triangle Neighborhood Development Area Subdistrict. Proposed PDA number 136, referred to as Fenway Corners Project West, spans several subdistricts, including the Fenway Triangle Neighborhood Development Area, the Brookline Avenue Community Commercial Subdistrict, and as a result of recent amendments to Article 66, that um, Michael Sinatra just mentioned, the North Boylston Street Neighborhood Shopping Subdistrict, NS3. Through the design review process, BPDA staff determined that the proposal demonstrated conformance with the provisions of the code, which allow for the creation of PDAs within these subdistricts to provide for a more flexible zoning law to, quote, enable integrated and well-designed development of projects of a more significant scope, to provide public benefits to the Fenway community, including the creation of additional housing options, with a particular emphasis on affordable housing, home ownership, and new job opportunities, and finally, to encourage economic development within the Fenway Neighborhood District. Design review guidance for the Fenway Corners project focused on needed improvements to the public realm, including the provision for a new street from Van Ness Street to Brookline Avenue, connecting Overland Street and Richard B. Ross Way, and needed improvements to Brookline Avenue, Van Ness Street, Jersey Street, and Lansdowne Street, to be delivered in coordination with the ongoing Fenway Transportation Action Plan. Careful consideration was given to the architectural character of the proposed project throughout the design review process in an effort to acknowledge the unique heritage of the site and its surroundings. With that, I would like to now turn the presentation over to the proponent team for additional project information. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Christina. Uh, can everyone hear me OK? Terrific. Thank, thanks so much. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, uh, board members, Director Jemison, Secretary Bill Hamas. My name is Yanni Sippus from WS Development. And as always, it's both a pleasure and a privilege to appear before this board. And we thank you for the opportunity to present um, the Fenway Corners project. And before we begin the formal presentation, we'd like to just take a moment for a little bit of context that we thought was relevant. Um, and I want to address this uh, uh, in part to Dr. Landsmark. Uh, Dr. Landsmark, you have an essay in David Gamble's new book about the future of our city that put a call out to the development community, and I'm going to quote you, to achieve social justice through design. And the project that we have before you this evening reflects our wholehearted agreement with that aspiration. Uh, we're here to embrace the need to create welcoming places that reflect the better angels of our Bostonian nature, the soul and character of the old, matched by the innovation and creativity and promise of the future. Opportunities for small businesses and startups to thrive and create generational wealth. Opportunities for public events and programs and art that reflect the diversity of our city. And above all, a common ground. And that's a term that we do not and will never use lightly, where all Bostonians can feel welcome and embraced and excited and empowered by the place around them. And those are certainly you know, lofty goals, and it's an awesome responsibility that our team has been working on for years before joining you this evening. 
Um, but we believe these goals to be achievable in part with this proposal. And uh, it's on that note that we'd also just like to take a moment to thank our entire project staff at the BPDA for literally years of hard work on this project, especially Director Jemison, Diana Fernandez, Lisa Harrington, Newport, Manani, and our project manager, Michael Sinatra, without all of whose help, we would not be here this evening. Next slide, please. Thank you all. Uh, we'd like to start this evening's presentation with some highlights about the project. Uh, it has a large footprint of over five acres, it comprises eight buildings totaling 2.1 million square feet, 1.6 million of which are the subject of tonight's board action. Um, uh, the buildings have been very thoughtfully planned to range in size and height and use and architectural style to ensure that this project really feels like it was part of kind of an organically grown part of this very historic neighborhood. Um, there's a major focus on the public realm with almost five acres of new or improved public spaces. And the project was also, uh, as Christina mentioned, deeply informed by and is consistent with the Fenway neighborhood zoning. And these highlights and our whole project philosophy really reflect the philosophy of the, the proponent um, which consists of a partnership between our firm, um, the D'Angelo family, which started its business on Jersey Street in 1947, and the Boston Red Sox, who've been present in the neighborhood since 1912. And the longevity of our team's presence in the Fenway neighborhood is very much informed kind of how we've approached this extraordinarily important opportunity for the city. Next slide, please. Uh, just by way of background, as, uh, as Michael and Christina mentioned, because of the size of this planning led projects footprint. It's divided into two separate uh, PDAs, Fenway West shown here in the blue, Fenway North, which, uh, Fenway West com is comprised of three individual development blocks, and Fenway North, which is shown here in the green. And although the proposal comprises two separate PDAs, the overall vision for the project was developed in a very unified and holistic way to create something really special here. Next slide, please. And so in this aerial image, uh, where the proposed project is outlined in the in the white line, uh, you can see how the project includes a very wide range of building typologies, heights, footprints, characters, uses, and the the idea here was to kind of allow the scale and texture of the surrounding uh, neighborhood to envelop the historic ballpark in a very natural way. Some of the buildings reach up to the allowed zoning heights, as you'll see in a moment. Some of the buildings fall well under the allowed zoning height, so that the height and density is really distributed around the project site with a great deal of variation and visual interest. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, a central guiding principle of the project is a relentless focus on the public realm. There's perhaps no other corner of the city that sees more foot traffic and public activity than the streets and ways and lanes surrounding Fenway Park. And this project's positive influence on that public realm will be felt far beyond just the footprints and frontages of the building sites themselves. It'll really permeate this whole part of the neighborhood. Next slide, please. Uh, illustrated on this ground floor plan is a more detailed snapshot of the kind of the scope of the improvements, the streetscape improvements, the public realm improvements planned with the project. These major investments will be truly transformative to an entire corner of the Fenway neighborhood and will definitively prioritize people and bicycles and transit over passenger vehicles as this public realm is reimagined uh, and expanded. Next slide, please. Now, the beating heart of this project is Jersey Street. Um, and today, when there's nothing going on inside Fenway Park, it looks a lot like any other vehicular street in the city. It's primarily for cars and trucks. And even at the foot of an iconic piece of what makes Boston, Boston, and America, America, this street still sends a message to human beings that the car is king. And we're going to change that for the whole world to see. Next slide, please. In the future, uh, kind of just as every great you know, place of worship or civic building across the world has a plaza or a piazza or a square in front of it, so too will this icon of what makes Boston the great city that it is finally have a truly public place at its front door for all to enjoy. So in connection with this project, we propose to fully pedestrianize Jersey Street year-round, to democratize the public realm with hundreds of public seats and public programs and public events and public art and a bustling street life at this incredibly important place in our city, and to send a message to all Bostonians and all visitors to the city that this is common ground. This is a place where all are welcome to stroll, to take a seat, to linger, to hang out, to jam, 
and to enjoy one of the most iconic places in our beloved city. This, you know, this uh, is a really, really important place. Um, this reimagined public realm will also be complemented by a low-rise kind of two-story architectural datum you can see on the left-hand side across from Fenway Park that's composed of red brick and wood timber and historic terracotta in the best architectural traditions of the city. Uh, next slide, please. In this current view of Jersey Street, there's very little that says to a human being, you're welcome here, come and enjoy. Many of the shops don't even open when there's not a game at Fenway Park and the street is really just a vehicular thoroughfare and loading zone. And next slide, please. But in the future, whether it's on a game day, as is pictured here, next slide, please. Or a beautiful summer evening with the whole neighborhood out for a stroll, next slide, please. Or a crisp you know, fall afternoon with a family pumpkin festival taking place and a band playing, next slide, please. Or in the middle of winter with the street you know, decked out for a holiday stroll, this place will feel welcome, welcoming to all. Uh, and unapologetically pedestrian oriented. You know, Fenway Park is one of the great icons of our city, one of the places that all Bostonians can be proud of. So why not make its front door the welcoming and diverse place that it should be all year round in service to the whole city? Next slide, please. In furtherance of that ideal, what is today a sports themed place of commerce and consumption along Jersey Street. Next slide, please. That will be replaced with a distinctly public space community gathering spot in the form of this amphitheater seating stair that says to all, you're welcome here, come and enjoy, uh, as well as something that's a little unusual in our city, which is a second story, universally accessible public space on the second floor of that, of that uh, wood timber building. We call the stair the Jersey Street Stoop. Uh, we call the second floor public space the Jersey Street Porch. Um, and we hope the whole city will treat these spaces as their own, like a, a, as every Bostonian's you know, front stoop, front porch, where neighbors greet neighbors, um, where strangers from all over the world will be drawn to experience the very best of our city. And in this view, you also get a sense of kind of the diversity of uses that we're proposing for the project with retail along the street, residential up above, commercial up above, all kind of mixed together like a real piece of city. Uh, next slide, please. Um, one of our guiding principles for the project is to embrace the pre-existing grit and grain of this area. And so in the case of this kind of obsolete service alley that leads into Jersey Street, we want to embrace rather than erase the grit and urbanity that exists. Next slide, please. And create something that's both surprising in its intimacy uh, for new development project, but also incredibly accessible and fascinating in its diversity of experience. And you know, we envision this reinvented service alley lined with lots of little shops and retail entrepreneurs like the laneways of Melbourne or the, you know, the markets of Marrakesh, we're repurposing this historic scale and clutter rather than redeveloping it and losing that incredible grit and human scale of the space. Next slide, please. And, you know, that commitment to creating welcoming and human scale places extends far beyond sort of the heart of the project site, as was shown in the last images here. This is one of the most popular ways of entering the Fenway neighborhood when you get off the train at Lansdowne Station. The pedestrian experience is certainly functional, uh, but it's not particularly welcoming. Next slide, please. And the proposed project will completely transform that pedestrian experience and line this entrance with lots of little food spots and shops and beautiful landscape and street furniture and other cues to, to, you know, to pedestrians, um, in addition to a much expanded public space at the corner of Brookline Avenue and, uh, and David Ortiz Drive here to provide a much more welcoming first impression of the Fenway neighborhood when you step off the train. Next slide, please. Now, you know, this project is certainly about transformation and change, um, but we also feel a really deep responsibility to protect and preserve the best of what makes Boston, Boston, from its beautiful historic architecture um, to its pedestrian scale street edges. And here, so here at the corner of Jersey Street and Brookline Avenue, you see this wonderfully scaled two-story expression of Fenway Park on the left and the beautiful terracotta facade of the Richardson Building across Jersey Street. It's named after a, a fallen World War I soldier named Lincoln Richardson. There's a little plaque at the corner um, that explains that history that, of course, will remain and be restored. In the next slide, please. And in the future, we'll be adding a variety of new uses to this area, including residential and retail and commercial. We'll be preserving and protecting 
that wonderful two-story historic street wall at pedestrian scale with a careful uh, historic preservation project of two buildings along Brooklyn Avenue wrapping the corner to Jersey Street and then very generous setbacks behind those historic facades. And this approach of adding density and new uses in a, in a very architecturally sensitive and kind of people first way, we hope will blend the best of old Boston with the best of 21st century Boston. Next slide, please. And then speaking of Brookline Avenue, um, in the current view looking towards Fenway Park and Kenmore Square, you can see how car centric this corridor is and how unfriendly the existing conditions are for pedestrians and for cyclists. Next slide, please. In the future condition, you can see how we're proposing to reconstruct this important corridor to better accommodate modern mobility priorities and add both market rate and affordable residential uh, homes at, at, at this location, along with new retail uses, and create something that's much safer and much more welcoming for pedestrians and cyclists alike. Uh, next slide, please. And so just to, to wrap up, we, you know, we hope that the those sort of before and after images that we've just shown have provided a sense of the transformation um, and the people first nature of the proposal that's before you this evening. Um, we'd like to close also by highlighting, as uh, Michael uh, did uh, at the beginning, the extraordinary magnitude of community benefits and improvements that this project will deliver. From tens of millions of dollars spent on transportation and public realm improvements to $23 million for affordable housing, um, to the creation of a new 100-seat daycare serving the Fenway community and the restoration of the long vacant duck house in the nearby Olmsted Park. We hope this project helps to achieve the community's aspirational vision for the Fenway as an urban village, serving an incredibly diverse population and celebrating the best of what makes Boston such an incredible city. Next slide, please. Uh, and so, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, we're humbled to present this shared vision for the future of one of the most iconic places in Boston. It's a future that we hope is deeply rooted in the past and yet deeply committed to creating a meaningful and lasting common ground. And above all, a future that is at its core for all Bostonians. That's what's most important. This is a place for everyone. So we thank you very much for the opportunity to present to you this evening and we're very grateful for your consideration as always. And of course, we'd be very happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Thank you very much for your time. So much. Um... So as this is a public hearing, we're going to first take a, a testimony from the public. A reminder, you have two minutes uh, to um, give your um, your support or, or opposition to this project. So uh, Secretary Paul Hemus, do we have anybody? Sure. Kelly Brilliant, you can unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I'm Kelly Brilliant. I'm the ex uh, uh, executive director of the Fenway Alliance. Um, I'm representing the 21 cultural and academic institutions in the Fenway. We are also the managers of the Fenway Cultural District and a member, and I am an official member of the CAC for this project. We are heartily endorsing and supporting this project. Um, we like the way it's evolved over two and a half years to address many of the community members' concerns, although they may be speaking um, more, a little bit more articulately on those concerns than I will right now. But we like, what we really like is the vibrancy it brings to this iconic neighborhood that is as iconic as it is, you can clearly see from the before pictures it needs some work to be brought into the 21st century. And we believe WS is doing that with their um, proposals to make it a much more pedestrian friendly place and frankly just a much more lively, interesting, and vibrant place. We like the performance spaces that are added. We would encourage you to use local public artists wherever possible for the art projects, and we would also encourage you to support um, the local festivals and other artistic art endeavors that many of the nonprofit organizations surrounding the Fenway bring to this area. But on the whole, we feel this brings Fenway Park into the 21st century and gives it the kind of iconic feel, look, and experience that it really deserves. So thank you for listening. Thank you, Kelly. Dolores Budanian, you can unmute yourself. Thank you very much. My name is Dolores Bogdanian. I live at 452 Park Drive. Um, I'm president of the Audubon Circle Neighborhood Association, which is a neighborhood uh, in the Fenway, and have uh, been 
um, involved in listening to the various presentations that WS Development has prepared. I want to be a believer. I think that the project has a lot of good aspects to it. I think that there are some elements of it that are uh, attractive. I think that the goals are lofty and ones that I can fully support. But I, there are some inconvenient truths here. Um, you know, the compliance with zoning is the zoning was changed to accommodate this project, including doubling the heights of the building. So this idea of being pedestrian scale and you know talking about 25-story buildings is um, you know a little, excuse me for saying this, but a little double speak. And um, and I think for a project of this magnitude, you know, going on some supplemental filings after a draft project in impact report is, I think, insufficient. There really should be, a, if any project warrants it, a final impact report to take into account all the things that have been raised and concerns raised about this project. Um, having one quarter, less than one quarter of this whole project deferred without the benefit of the transportation study, uh, I think is makes it the approval of premature. You know, and in compliance with BPDA guidelines, Event traffic associated with Fenway Park events, <laughs> whether it be concerts or games, have not been taken into account in the traffic analysis. So how cutting off Jersey Street and using Roth Way as an alternative can actually work, I think is suspect without truly understanding the traffic impacts of the project and of the ongoing use and heavy use of the stadium. There are, we've, the Neighborhood Association submitted a letter. I would like the board to take it into account. Um, and I think the fact that the city hasn't had one public hearing about the uh, safety, public safety aspects of lab uses um, is really unfortunate and an oversight on the part of the BPDA. Thanks for the opportunity. Dolores, you, you raised some, some good points, so we'll um, take that into consideration. Um, any uh, additional? Yes. Yep. Michael Burns, you can unmute yourself. Yes, good evening. Uh, thank you, Madam Secretary Polhemus, uh, Madam Chair Rojas, Director Jemison, the BPDA Board. Uh, i also like to thank, as always, the BPDA staff for facilitating these important community conversations, in particular on this one, Michael Sinatra, uh, for his work on this project. All of your work does not go unnoticed. Uh, uh, for the record, my name is Michael Burns. I'm a business representative for the Sheet Metal Workers Local 17 here in Boston. I represent several hundred sheet metal workers who live and work in the city. Uh, on behalf of my membership tonight, I'd first like to thank Yanni and the development team, WS Development, for their partnership, not only with my organization, but the Boston Building Trades as a whole. Uh, we feel this is great development for the neighborhood, and we appreciate their commitment to the working class uh, construction workers in our city. So I rise tonight on behalf of my members to wholeheartedly support this project. Thank you for the time to speak. Thank you. Tom Pecoraro, you can unmute yourself. Hi, my name is Tom Pecoraro. I'm a business agent with Iron Workers Local 7. Uh, first, I'd like to thank everyone for the presentation. And, uh, and I uh, rise heavily in favor of this project on behalf of myself and uh, 5,000 Local 7 Iron Workers. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Rich Giordano, you can unmute yourself. Rich. Thank you. It yep. took a moment to find the unmute button. Uh, my name, uh, for the record, is Richard Giordano. I'm uh, Director of Community Planning and Policy at Fenway CDC, a uh, 50-year-old community development organization. Um, we wanted to uh, express our support for all of the changes that the uh, developers have made uh, over the last two and a half years community process. We've been on the CAC along with the other members. Um, specifically, we really wanted to underscore the change of the housing program from 216 units to 256, and also the increase in the IDP percentage. Uh, at the time uh, this was going through, it was only pegged at 13 percent, and they're going to 20. Um, we also definitely wanted to commend the developer for uh, bringing in 
at, uh, at uh, listening to the community and uh, mentioning the 100-seat uh, uh, child care early ed center. That's a tremendous improvement. The mobility and access things are doing are great. And of course, the Fenway would love the duck house to be rehabbed. So uh, we really want to thank the developer and in particular also mention that they want to uh, front load their IDP payment uh, and uh, talking about trying to work with all concern to keep the linkage payments in the Fenway to develop more affordable housing. So all of these things are tremendously appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Richie Escobar, you can unmute yourself. Hi, good evening. My name is uh, Richie Escobar. I'm a City of Boston resident and a member of Local 4 Union. Uh, first of all, thank you everyone for the wonderful presentation. And uh, I would just like to say that I am in support of this project. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Pam Beal, you can unmute yourself. Thank you and good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Secretary Polhemus and Director Jamison. My name is Pam Beal. My address is 462 Beacon Street. I am a member of the CAC and I'm here to speak in support of this project. From the beginning, the proponents have engaged with the community, listened to the issues and responded with plans that will address all of the community concerns. Throughout this process, WS development has shown an understanding and respect for the history and character of the neighborhood. They have made it clear that their vision will combine important existing buildings and features with new street designs, landscaping, and an, and, and an enhanced public realm. Additionally, their plans call for all types of commercial and retail uses that will enliven the streets and add new quality jobs and much needed year-round economic opportunities. Another very important aspect of these plans is the commitment that WS Development has made to work alongside the community our elected officials and other developers and stakeholders to ensure that the Kenmore Fenway area gets the resources and transportation investments it needs to reach its full potential. In summary, I believe that the review process has been extremely thorough and detailed and that the many benefits and mitigation measures that this project will bring to our neighborhood will be an extraordinary improvement and very much welcome. Accordingly, I urge you to vote to support this project and I thank you for the opportunity to comment this evening. Thank you. Taylor Rose, you can unmute yourself. Hi, good evening. Uh, can, you hear, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, awesome. Uh, I just wanted to thank the BPDA. I want to thank you, WS. I think this project is going to be an amazing project. It's going to be great for the community. It's going to give Fenway exactly what it needs in that area. It's going to create hundreds of jobs. And I think it's a great project. So I'm here in full support. And thank you very much. Thank you, Taylor. Mallory Rorick, you can unmute yourself. Hi, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> Sorry, I think everyone probably asks that. That's okay. Uh, I, would, I would like to thank Madam Chair, the Board of Directors, Secretary Polhemus, Director Jemison, and all here tonight. I am Mallory Rorig, Executive Director of the Fenway Community Center, and I'm also a CAC member. Uh, so I do want to just share that the Fenway Community Center, we, we objectively note that the changes made to the project over the last couple of years have been in direct response to community feedback. This includes important neighborhood services, such as an early education center and amenities, such as the affordable dining option. The FCC appreciates the care and the concern of the proponent in considering design and impact in the neighborhood. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mallory. Shaton Green, you can unmute yourself. Hello, my name is Shaton Green. I'm a business agent with the Boston Building Trades Unions. I'm also a resident um, of Roxbury. Um, I support this project. Um, uh, I enjoy every time I worked in this area, being able to walk from Roxbury to Fenway and, and just enjoy the, the, the history um, and also to be a part of it. Um, so I appreciate the, the careers um, that this job helps with because great careers help the community um, and bring back those wages and great benefits back to um, each member's family and also themselves. So I support this project. Um, just want to be on record. 
Thank you. Thank you, Shatan. Martin O'Riordan, you can unmute yourself. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, start off by saying that uh, WS and Michael Sinatra have done a fantastic job on this. It's been a long, long road, two plus years, but uh, the end result speaks for itself. It's a massive upgrade to the existing structures, uh, and it's, I think it's really going to be a huge benefit to the area. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Martin. Sandeep, uh, you can unmute yourself. Sandeep, you're still muted. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Terrific. Um, thank you so much for allowing me to speak. I, um, I'm a, a resident uh, and a homeowner at 16 Minor Street. Um, you know, the presentation made just now, I, it, there is a lot of terrific goodness and um, a lot of terrific things happening. Um, there are a handful of things that I do want to point out that I think also have some adverse consequences that I'm not sure have been studied or adequately addressed that would impact the rentability, marketability, and livability of my, uh, of, of my home as well as my uh, uh, fellow condo owners here at 16 Minor Street. Um, these include six things um, that I just wanted to make everyone aware of, uh, including a drastic reduction of the sky dome due to the height increases, increased shadows on residential structures as well as the public realm, aggravation of wind tunnel effects ranging from uncomfortable to potentially dangerous, um, heightened commercial vehicle vehicular uh, congestion, potentially unsafe uh, traffic conditions, uh, generation of additional noise due to commercial service vehicles, including construction vehicles, garbage trucks, delivery vehicles, and associated backup alarms, and the escalation of pollution resulting from large building footprints and service demands, uh, including the potential of toxic emissions from, from, from lab spaces. Um, you know, I, 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 uh, I think that there's a lot of goodness in, in the project, but I just, I, I, I don't feel adequately consulted um, and, and feel like, you know, the, the residents, uh, uh, and, and our block have not been a part of the conversation. So I sadly have to object. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cindy. John Good, you can unmute yourself. Good evening and thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the BBDA and the developers for such a thoughtful process and a wonderful job. Uh, I wish my dad would be around to see this project. This truly does bring old to new and I, I, I stand for this project 100%. I am a business rep for the uh, sheet metal workers, and I wholeheartedly support this project. Thank you. Thank you, John. Hector Rivera, you can unmute yourself. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, so my name is Hector Rivera, business rep with the Carpenters Union, and uh, I just wanna say that it was a great presentation, and on behalf of the Carpenters Union, we are in full support of this project. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Hector. Frank Amato, you can unmute yourself. Hi, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Frank Amato. I am a representative business agent with Plumbers and Gas Fitters, Local 12, and we wholeheartedly support this project and appreciate everything that the BBDA has done with this project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Leonard Sorrell, you can unmute yourself. Hello, good evening. Uh, this is Len Sorrell. I am a lifelong resident of Boston, also a member of Operating Engineers Local 4. I'd like to thank the BPDA and WS for bringing this project forward. And I'm full, you have my full support for this project, for the community, and for what it's meant for. Thank you, and have a great night. Thank you. Ryan Mancini, you can unmute yourself. Hello, good evening. I'd like to say thank you to Madam Secretary, Madam Chair, BPDA, and as well as WS Development and Mike Sinatra too. Thank you guys for the excellent presentation tonight. I think it's a great project for the area. It's gonna do wonders for work for all the building trades and, and, and it's gonna bring work and, and income for years to come for a lot of people in the area. So again, I'd like to say thank you very much and I hope you all have a great night. Thank you. Thomas Jones, you can unmute yourself. 
Hello, my name is Thomas Jones. I live at 11 Park Drive and have been a resident of the Fenway for almost four decades. We have a condo that for 23 years. So I've studied this project for the last several years very, very extensively, and I have absolute confidence that the project is right for this neighborhood. I have absolute support for it. I think the quality of life will be greatly improved. I applaud Yanni and this team for their sensitivity to the neighborhood concerns, their absolute willingness to address these concerns. I am in 100% support of this. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda Winans, you can unmute yourself. Hi, hello, good evening. My name's Amanda. I'm a current resident of the um, Ken Kenmore Fenway area. I actually live right next door to the Fenway corner. Um, as a current resident of the area, I'm here to show my full support of this project. I think it's such a fantastic idea to elevate the area and I would love to see it go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. H. Parker James, you can unmute yourself. Uh, hi, I am, um, my name is Parker James. I am a 42-year resident of the um, Charles Gate Kenmore area, which is uh, adjacent to the Fenway Corners neighborhood. Uh, I just want to give my full-throated support for this project. It'll be transformational, um, and it will help um, cement the um, sort of evolution of the center core of the city westward. Um, I think it's going to be great. I don't see any downside. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. Joe Lehman, you can unmute yourself. How you doing? Uh, my name is Joe Lehman. I'm a lifelong city of Boston resident, a uh, member of Local 4, operate engineers. Uh, I want to thank the BPTA and WS Development for hosting this meeting. Uh, I think Yanni mentioned uh, about Fenway, you know, being like kind of a ghost town when Fenway's, uh, when there's no game at Fenway. And I, I, I truly believe like a job, uh, a project like this with the daycare, the housing, you know, the, the, the public space will really, uh, you know, bring the area together and uh, to tie everything in. Um, it's, I think it's very interesting seeing how like a neighborhood comes together and uh, I, I, I fully support this project. Thank you. Thank you. Amy Ganter, you can unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, I'm also, my name is Amy Ganter, and I'm also a member of Local 4 Operating Engineers. And everything that I've seen about this project looks amazing. I like the dream of the whole open public spaces, the daycare and I am in full support of this project. Thank you, Amy. Panos Demeter, you can unmute yourself. Hello, this is Panos Demeter. I'm the uh, manager of 61 Brookline LLC. Uh, the building uh, people know has, uh, might know as a Berkshire uh, Bank, Ben and Jerry's and Loco Taqueria. Uh, we've been uh, in the area for over 40 or close to 40 years. It's a multi-generational family business. We've seen the area uh, change over the years and we are very, very pleased to see um, WS uh, take it to the next level by doing this project. They have kept us informed, uh, their team, throughout the process and um, we're very pleased to, to see them. I wish, uh, I wish everyone best of luck and we are in favor. Thank you, Thank you for Thank you. Uh, having me. Thank you. Terry Sweeney, you can unmute yourself. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Terry Sweeney. I'm a business rep with Pipe Fitters Local 537 in Boston. And I uh, would like to thank WS Development and the BBTA for putting this together. And um, I rise all highly in support of this project. Thank you so much. Thank you. Christopher Strang, you can unmute yourself. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Secretary Polimus, uh, friends and neighbors. My name is Christopher Strang. I live in Kenmore Tower, 566 Commonwealth Avenue, Kenmore Square. I am very much in favor of the proposed development by WS. It addresses many needs as far as economic development, affordable housing, aesthetic improvements to this part of Fenway Park, and, and it also has a very responsible and, and community-minded developer who we appreciate having help improve our neighborhood. So I'm a hard yes. Thank you. Chris Carey, you can unmute yourself. 
Thank you, WS Development, for this great presentation. Uh, my name is Christopher Carey. I'm a, a business representative for Local 4, the operating engineers. And on behalf of our members who are Boston City residents that are unable to speak tonight, we speak in favor of this project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alex Sosniak, you can unmute yourself. Hey everyone, good evening. My name is Alex Sachnetz. I'm with the Fenway Civic Association. I'm also a member of the CAC for this project. Um, I, I rise to speak uh, to echo a lot of points made by uh, Dolly Bogdanian, who spoke earlier. Um, Fenway Civic, in, in general, is, is in support conceptually of this project, but we do feel that there are still some significant concerns that have yet to be addressed. Uh, and so we are. Um, concerned that this is proceeding to a full approval without um, you know properly measuring and studying every um, aspect that is uh, still being requested and, and has been requested almost since the beginning uh, of this project by uh, various community groups including Fenway Civic the fact that traffic studies do not include uh, Fenway games and events is still a very notice noticeable oversight um, the, the lack of the, the full Fenway transportation study being able to uh, judge any impacts uh, of, of this project on traffic in the neighborhood um, has, has still yet to be fully addressed. So um, I, I certainly understand that there are a lot of vested interests uh, that would like to see this project progress forward, business interests, uh, uh, unions uh, who will stand to gain a lot of jobs from this. Um, and I hope that those comments will be uh, treated with the weight that, that they deserve, um, while noting that these people, you know, are, are not Fenway residents. And I, I think it's clear from some of the comments that uh, some of the people have not been to Fenway in quite some time. The idea that Fenway is a ghost town when uh, a game is not happening is frankly laughable. Uh, this community is vibrant at all times of the year, and uh, adding games and events only congests the neighborhood. So uh, not to say that this project is not welcome, not to say that it will not be a net benefit for the neighborhood. We think it will. Um, but there are still some significant concerns to be addressed. Um, Fenway Civic would like our concerns to be heard. Um, and I believe we do have uh, at least one outstanding letter to the BPDA uh, that has yet to be addressed. So uh, we would love further discussion on this. We would love um, further discourse and dialogues. We do think that is necessary. Thanks very much. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to testify about this project? Please raise your virtual hand. <laughs> Madam Chair, I think this concludes the public hearing portion of this item. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Secretary Wilkins. Um, so as indicated, you know, uh, if the developer would like to, you know, have a brief rebuttal <laughs> on, on some of that thing we, you can you have the the um uh the right to do that or we can kind of just jump into questions uh from the board so just we're very grateful very grateful for all the uh, public comments thank you very much madam chair great um okay so um i guess my next questions are going to be around uh processes and kind of what's next in this um I had to do a lot of studying to, to kind of really understand this, how this whole process works, right, from, from PDA and then uh, individual uh, projects uh, and the level of detail and the process uh, and the opportunities for additional um, engagement uh, with those are. So um, if someone either from, you know, from the agency or the developer, you know, uh, can kind of take us through kind of what's a PDA uh, and what's an individual project and kind of how, how do those link together? Because I think that will kind of answer some of these, um, some of the questions on, you know, we don't have answers yet. Sure. Sure. Uh, happy to uh, address that, Madam Chair. So the, the, the two PDAs provide um, the, essentially the zoning envelope, the zoning framework um, for the various buildings that are part of the Fenway Corners project. Each of the individual buildings, and there are eight, some large, some small, some tall, some short, um, will uh, be subject to a multitude of ongoing review processes. Number one, each individual building will be subject to BPDA design review. Number two, each individual building 
uh, will be subject to the Boston Civic Design Commission review. Of course, the, and those are all you know public uh, uh, public proceedings. Number three, and this is a little bit unusual and specific to this project, we've agreed that as each of the blocks proceeds, the specific project uh, components proceeds through the design review and BCDC process, that we will also hold at the agency's uh, behest one or more uh, community advisory committee meetings for each individual block within the project to provide the CAC an opportunity to ask questions, provide feedback, on the you know the more detailed design of each project, impact of each project, um, within the context of the of the PDAs, um, and so we're in addition to all the other sort of customary uh, review and uh, permitting processes on a building by building basis. So, long story short, for each component of the project within the PDA frameworks, there's still a great deal of uh, design review, uh, you know, opportunity for community engagement. Um, uh, on a block by block basis, and certainly that's core to our philosophy. We're, you know, we're here. We're not going anywhere. We're here for the long term, and we're very, very happy to continue to engage with the CAC and the community at large uh, on a on a, a block by block basis. I hope that I hope that uh, answers your question, Madam Chair. Yes, it does. I think um, uh, that's that's helpful. Um, and then the uh, let's talk about the uh, the traffic study. <laughs> Um, that's a that's a hot topic. So, um, can you give us some kind of some background and how we get comfortable right with um, the work that we've done? And it's been a couple of years of work on that traffic study. Uh, what's still left to do? And kind of once we get that final final report, um, you know what what happens after that, right? Sure. So this project has been through, um, as was highlighted, about two years of. Um, a formal BPDA and other city agency review process. Uh, we've submitted at the city's request, the BPDA's request, multiple traffic studies, including um, in the DPIR, a traffic study that was specifically responsive to the BPDA's and BTD scoping determination that had a very lengthy list of um, asks and requirements and so forth. And so we've uh, we've analyzed the uh, transportation conditions. When we talk about traffic, it's not just vehicular traffic. We're, we really are talking about a more holistic look at the overall transportation conditions associated with the project. Um, and so those have been very thoroughly analyzed and mitigated um, within, the, you know, within the project as it stands. But we have agreed, uh, as was highlighted uh, uh, before, to defer a portion of the, the GFA of the project until such time as the Fenway Kenmore Transportation Action Plan bit of a mouthful, uh, is completed, and we fully expect that that plan, which is just now getting rolling, for lack of a better term, um, will further analyze not just the impacts and um, sort of implications of this particular project, but really of the entire kind of Fenway, Kenmore, Longwood uh, transportation network um, system uh, in order to, in order to, you know, develop uh, solutions that really are neighborhood-wide and beyond. And so we've agreed to defer uh, any additional GFA from this project until such time um, as that uh, as that study is done and appropriate mitigation measures can be developed uh, through that lens. And of course, that study will have a very, very thorough community review process as well, which obviously anyone from the city is welcome to, to speak to if uh, desired. Thank you. Thanks, Yanni. Madam Chair, I can jump in and share a little bit about this deferred GFA from the EPDA's perspective. Um, since you asked the question, my name is Nupur Monani for the record. I'm the deputy director for master planning and policy and have been working closely with Michael and others on sort of reviewing this project um, on the development of the side. Um, so as was alluded to in uh, Michael's opening remarks, there is a portion of the originally sort of envisioned FAR that was put forth to us at the beginning of this project that the agency has sort of held off on, right? And I think the big reason for that is um, we, we just didn't feel like there had been sort of enough analysis done to study and kind of clearly understand the impacts of what that additional gross square footage would do for the transportation network. Um, so that led to sort of the de development of the study that our um, folks in the transportation team are leading with the board's approval. And I think our approach is sort of as and when findings become available from that study, it will become sort of more evident to us what is needed to kind of support the growth um, of the neighborhood over and above was allowed by the underlying zoning today. And the sort of development team has agreed to sort of enter into an approach with us where the deferment of that FAR um, is not only sort of pushed out in the future, but is also tied very closely 
to the mitigation that is recommended by the study, right? So they're essentially committing to do whatever is needed to support that growth and sort of lessen the negative impacts from um, any of those additional GFA within the neighborhood. So I think we're, we're all kind of watching closely to see how that unfolds, but we fully expect to be working very closely, not just with the development team, uh, but also with the neighborhood as both the study unfolds and we consider the additional gross square footage. Um, from a regulatory standpoint, there will be several actions that the board will need to sort of take in order to approve this FAR. Um, it will require first and foremost a change to the underlying zoning, uh, Article 66, to increase the allowed FAR. Second, it will require um, an approval by the board to amend the PDA, PDA West, as well as to review and approve uh, a notice of project change to the Article 80 project. And then the third and final action will be, again, of course, approval of both of these zoning changes to the underlying zoning as well as the PDA by the Zoning Commission. Um, and all of these sort of steps we will kind of follow using our standard process and there will be community um, kind of feedback opportunities throughout these processes, the additional spot footage unfolds. So I wanted to provide the regulatory context. I know we're talking about sort of you know, a time in the future, but um, I wanted to just sort of reassure folks who have testified today and have expressed concerns about what happens next, that there will be a lot of checks and balances. Thank you, thank you, Nipur. Um, You know, again, around the traffic, I mean, I, I can't believe that you did it. Like, you studied traffic, you did some analysis, right, um, to date, to come up with the PDA, to, to know that, like, hey, you know, we think this is, this is going to work. Can you just, uh, on event days, game days, I, I would find it hard to believe that you didn't do that, didn't do sure. something, right? To, to maybe even talk about what you know. You sure. Did. Yeah. The, look, the, the the analyses that we conducted were very thorough, very holistic, um, neighborhood wide. We had an extremely large uh, study scope, and it, uh, you know the the conditions of those studies were were a sort of day-to-day. -day. They weren't, you know, they didn't specifically pick out event days um, for, for the, um, you know, for the, the largest body of the studies. But I would also say that because we're partners with the Red Sox, who are, you know, deeply ensconced, of course, in operating Fenway Park and understand very well the way Fenway Park operates, we work extensively with our transportation consultants to develop sort of more specific scenario analyses for event days that focused not just on the flow of passenger vehicles around the area, but also, for example, the, the operations of um, transportation network companies, Ubers and Lyfts, and trying to optimize how those all worked in order to minim minimize impacts. Um, and I think we also put forth a number of different proposals, um, which will be informed by the FTAP, the Fenway Kenmore Transportation Action Plan, for, for example, Brookline Avenue or Vanessa Street. Um, so that that study can further inform the way those uh, roadways will operate both on a day-to-day -day basis but also when there are event days um, to better handle pedestrian uh, bicycle and transit vehicle flow in addition to passenger vehicles so you know we're very we have a very strong vested interest in ensuring that whether there's an event going on or not um, that the transportation network for all modes continues to function well in this area Thank you. Uh, uh, questions and comments from the board. Sorry, I took up, <laughs> took up a, a lot of time there. I, I just want to. Uh, Go ahead, Dr. Lansmark, please. And I just want to commend uh, uh, WS for uh, the really thoughtful and inclusive uh, process um, that has brought together uh, folks from um, various communities throughout the Fenway. Um, in uh, moving this forward, and I think that uh, they put forward a very uh, thoughtful uh, uh, conclusion here uh, to deal with those sections of the neighborhood that uh, could certainly use some improvement. So uh, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Lansmark. It means a lot to us. Thank you. I would just like to add. Um, it's really evident that you've listened to your Fenway neighbors over the last two years, and I think what you've come up with here at the end is, is something that's transformative. It's, it's really uh, going to benefit all of the neighbors in the city as a whole. I, I love what you've done, so uh, good luck. Okay, additional questions or comments? Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. 
Um, there was one thing that I forgot. Um, so, and this is with respect to um, to the life sciences building. Once we get, once you get to, you know, to that portion, while we don't, um, you know, haven't put in place all of the mechanisms by which we can, uh, you know, communicate and you know get uh, information out to to all of the communities to the to the wider Boston community on what our kind of plan and vision is for life sciences in general. Um, but can you talk about the uh, your intended engagement process uh, around uh, when you get that life sciences building, how you can how you plan on uh, engaging with the community to make sure that their very valid concerns are are addressed. Of course, and, and this again, uh, Madam Chair, is an area where I think the the process and community and engagement commitments made by this project, you know, go really above and beyond. And so, for example, as I mentioned earlier, during the design phase of each building, um, certainly whether it's a residential building or a life sciences building, you know, we'll have an extensive community engagement process with the CAC, and those meetings will be you know open to the open to the public, and we'll be happy to communicate more specifics around. The uses within the buildings, um, if there are concerns about those uses, how those concerns can be mitigated and addressed, you know, all the safety procedures in place, the regulatory context that would be applicable to those uses. And so having that extra step of engagement with the CIC on a building by building basis, we hope will provide an opportunity not only for feedback about building architecture, but also for engagement around, you know, questions and concerns, with, you know, around the uses within the buildings at the same time. So having that forum, we hope, will be really, you know, really fruitful for that purpose as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, and yeah, um, you know, I think uh, I appreciate your recognition of the responsibility <laughs> that we are putting into your hands if this, is, you know, if this is approved. Um, and this is a special place, right, for a lot, for a lot of people. Um, and you know, want to, what you have planned is exciting. Um, I, I think we're headed in the right direction. Um, but yeah, I mean, we are kind of trusting, right? <laughs> right? Your, you know, words that all of these, you know, this engagement is going to happen. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that you'll kind of live up to, uh, you know, the vision and uh, the, you know, yeah, your vision for this area, um, our shared vision for this area, um, on what it what it can be. So um, you're not new to this. You're not new to this area of the uh, of the city. So um, you know, uh, I have some trust, right? Like that that um, you, you've done it in the past, or examples where where you've done that, um, and. Um, I believe that you do uh, understand the responsibility that you have here. We, we take it very seriously, and we very much appreciate that that confidence, Madam Chair. Thank you. All right. If there are no other further questions or comments, uh, motion is in order. So moved. Second. We'll call for a vote. Uh, Mr. Monahan. Aye. Dr. Landsmark. Aye. Mr. Miller. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Motion passes. Uh, congratulations. Good luck and. We'll be seeing you again. <laughs> you shall. Thank you all so much. All right. Have a nice evening. Thank you. And thank you to all who made time to uh, talk to this slide today. Um, we appreciate you. OK, let's go back to agenda item number 14. <clears throat> Request authorization to issue a certification of approval pursuant to Article 80E Small Project Review of the Boston Zoning Code for the construction of 40 residential rental units, including seven IDP units, 4,474 square feet of ground floor health clinic space, 26 at-grade parking spaces, uh, approximately 40 bicycle spaces located at 735 through 745 River Street and Hyde Park, and to take all related actions. Stephen. Hey, hi, call Stephen. Hello. Uh, yeah, I think it was just a leftover from the interpretation situation. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, no need to, to interpret this part. Um, and Stephen, just go ahead. 
Good evening. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Madam Secretary, and Director Jamison. My name is Stephen Harvey, and I'm a senior project manager at the BPDA, and I want to thank you for your time today. The project I bring before you today is 735 745 River Street, located in High Park. On March 9th, 2023, the Boston Planning and Development Agency received a small project review application from the proponent. The proponent is proposing to construct a new five-story mixed-use building. The new building will contain 40 rental units and a 4,474 square foot ground floor commercial space. The project will also have 26 at-grade parking spaces and 40 bike parking spaces. The commercial space will be occupied by the proponent. The proponent will continue to operate his health clinic in the new commercial space. The health clinic currently occupies a portion of the project site. A virtual public meeting for the project was held on April 19th, 2023. Overall, the proposal was well received and the discussion that took place at the meeting brought about the project you see today. The virtual public meeting was advertised in the local paper and via email. The comment period for the project ended April 28th, 2023. With that said, I'd like to pass it over to Anhel. Anhel is a neighborhood planner for this section of High Park. Anhel will touch on the resource the resources guiding staff to review the proposed project and key considerations. Once NHL completes his slides, Nick Zulu, the project attorney, and Jonathan Garland, the project architect, sorry, architect, will then run through the project presentation. Once the presentation is complete, Jonathan Garland, Nick Zulu, and Cliff Bonnet, the proponent, and I will answer any questions put forward by the board. Thank you once again for your time today. Thank you, Stephen, and good evening, Chair Rojas, Secretary Polimas, and members of the board. My name is Angel Guzman, and I am a BPDA planner with the zoning compliance team. The proposed project is not located within the boundaries of a recent planning initiative. Instead, planning division staff considered the neighborhood context, adopted citywide plans, including Imagine Boston 2030 and Go Boston 2030, the zoning code, and public feedback to review the project. Key considerations of BPDA staff during the review of the project included mitigating the impact of parking on the streetscape and the budding properties, securing a height and massing that are sensible to the surrounding neighborhood context, and ensuring adequate usable open space for residents. The project is located within proximity of multiple silver line bus stops and will accommodate on-site and sidewalk bike parking contributing to citywide goals to support transit-oriented development. Thank you, and I will now turn it over to the development team to present the project in more detail. Uh, good evening. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you, Anel. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Good evening, Madam Chair, Director Jemison, board members, and Secretary Paul Emus, Attorney Nick Zazula, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller, uh, Zoning and Permitting Council for the project. As you heard with me today is Jonathan Garland from JGE Architecture and Design, the project architect, as well as Dr. Jean Bonnet and his son Cliff Bonnet, uh, the property owners and project developers. I uh, would like to just give a quick uh, uh, just background on this project. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So you'll see here the 745 River Street portion of the overall site. Uh, has been owned by Dr. Bonet for over 20 years. Uh, it's the home of his longtime medical practice with the Hyde Park Health Associates, which brings community-based health services uh, and specialists to an underserved community in Hyde Park. Uh, the Bonet family also recently purchased the adjacent site at 735 River Street, which is an, uh, that's the site to the right here on the screen. And that is an old auto body shop uh, in an auto yard, uh, and that is now included in the overall project as well. Uh, Dr. Bonet was born in Haiti. His practice focuses on cardiovascular disease and diabetes. He's been recognized by the city council uh, for his significant contributions to his community. And this project will help with that uh, in the long term viability and uh, uh, vibrancy of the site. Uh, an upgraded medical clinic on the ground floor is proposed. Uh, and the clinic will remain as a fixture of much needed neighborhood services for years to come, along with a new residential component above it, which you'll see shortly. Uh, we'd like to thank the BPDA staff, Stephen, uh, and others, as well as the Hyde Park elected delegation, uh, the Belknell Family Neighborhood Association, which we worked uh, very closely with on this project, 
and the community for their continued input on uh, what we think is a great project. I'll now toss it over to Jonathan, uh, who will quickly go through our presentation. Jonathan. Thank you, Nick. Um, good afternoon, Madam Chair, Director Jamison, Secretary Polhemus, members of the board. Uh, we're privileged to be before you again this evening. Uh, next slide. So this is a quick snapshot of the site location, the area. You can see in red uh, where it denotes the site, eastbound on River Street, westbound the opposite direction on River Street, southeast on Thorn Street, which is an adjacent side street that you'll see, and then a little bit more from a distance, River Street and Wachusett Street. Next slide. Uh, just to quickly run through the overall development program and approximate configuration, we are here proposing 40 residential rental apartments with the mix of 18 one-bedroom units, 15 two-bedroom units, and seven three-bedroom units. This will comprise amply-sized uh, family-style units, which we're really proud to bring a family-style offering to the neighborhood. Uh, at the ground floor, uh, the building will have uh, 4,700 square feet of a medical office clinic for the Bonet family to continue their great uh, outpatient clinic work in the neighborhood, uh, only in this case with a brand new modernized state-of-the-art uh, uh, space. Uh, the total lot area is 18,000 square feet, and the total development comes just under 50,000 square feet. Uh, to the right-hand side, you can see that we are contributing 17.5% being IDP affordable units with the ranges shown for a total of 6,130 square feet of affordable units. Next slide. Uh, this is an illustrative site plan uh, where you can see the context grayed out in our building uh, uh, captured more boldly. I would like to direct your attention to the uh, L-shaped space to the right-hand side, which is not our site, but it is part of a, a larger community give back benefit where the proponent is committing to upgrade the passageway, which is a roadway connection uh, that connects between River Street and Thorn Street in a one-way direction. Currently to date, that space is uh, over overutilized by the auto lot that's on the site. The asphalt is really torn apart. There isn't a safe pedestrian connection, but we would be bringing all that online with new sidewalks, uh, well-lit space, uh, striped parking for the cars that you can see, as well as perimeter landscaping. Uh, the building is the white in the, in the foreground, and we're also showing a very large uh, outdoor space that's elevated over the parking at the second floor. Next slide. Uh, this shows the ground floor a little bit more in detail. Uh, the green spaces around the site is uh, really uh, are, are uh, looking very closely at ways to provide ample outdoor space and green space along the site to buffer the edge. We're also showing a collection of new street trees um, to help uh, define the street edge and work within complete street guidelines. 